Yeah, good morning. So let's begin. Uh, simply because I don't want to be unjust to people who have come at least five minutes late, uh, rather than people who will come 10 minutes late. So let's start for the benefit of people who came in time. Uh, as a quick recap, we, we did the plan and execute uh, portions from how to visually communicate and we today are uh, looking forward for the third section of the whole process called impress. Um, I'm going to recap about a couple of assignments submitted. Uh, some observations, couple of people have submitted just two slide presentation. Uh, some of them have uh, uh, submitted the same presentation uh, being submitted by every group member of the group. So I thought I was very happy at 6 o'clock when I opened the Moodle and I saw like 28 submissions and I was saying, wow, every group has submitted. And then only I realized that couple of them have submitted twice and thrice when I started downloading them. Uh, I, I think uh, it's a good idea to do that uh, before we actually go ahead. Um, yeah, this was a common practice seen that uh, people had just uh, named the file with their roll number and all that. But the presentation slide number one never had their names, roll numbers, nothing. It just started with Lanban. So uh, although it's a submission, so you, you have the liberty of naming it in the roll numbers, but typically avoid this because uh, when you upload it or when people will see it, they need to see who has done it. There was a very interesting slide in this presentation. So I think who did this? Uh, somebody, Ashish. Is he there? Ah, okay. Yeah. So I think, uh, so what was the reason of this gray slide? To show the disadvantages. Yeah, but the disadvantage is that, what is the disadvantage of the slide itself? Nobody can read it, right? So, if you wanted to communicate that these are the disadvantages, what was the alternative you had? No, you, you use a white background slide, it's fine, but you want to communicate something using color. You wanted a dark background, but then you should have just changed the text to white. That should have sufficed, because readability is the prime. This is an example of a blind slide. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> okay, then it is a very apt example. But uh, by the way, if you read my uh, assignment, I had written that use of graphics, in sense, use a image, use a counter graphic to show, uh, because we had not discussed about color schemes and all. What I was expecting was we had uh, seen multiple types of graphics. So I wanted you to use a bad graphic instead of a good graphic but you didn't use any graphic. Maybe that is your <laughs> definition of using a bad graphic, but that's okay. Uh, I had uh, something interesting here. Okay, the same uh, problem. So slide starts with software piracy, no names. It's okay, we can go ahead. Yeah, this slide has a title. So the first slide is software piracy. Second slide is motivation. So is it the motivation of the talk or motivation of why to do software piracy or motivation of why to stop software piracy? What is that motivation mean? It's a hanging word actually. So uh, such kind of uh, titles, even though they make sense, you should avoid such titles. This is a very good example actually and that's why I wanted you to see this. Uh, the person has searched the net and found a very good comparison chart. It's a Good graphic to use, probably. I hope uh, this is not an example of bad slide, right? Who, who did this? The group is itself missing. Okay, but uh, ah, you give. So not example of a bad slide. No. Okay. Good. So this is a good example. The problem is that uh, you have found out a very good table which shows highest and the uh, lowest piracy in the world. Uh, the graph itself says highest and lowest. Graph itself shows the names of the countries, and you again spend some space and uh, uh, you make the graphics smaller unnecessarily to write the same things again. So simply put the same graphic big size and put a box around it, what you wanted to highlight. You wanted to highlight highest and the lowest. They are already present there. Just put a box like I have done in the orange color and remove this text. That will just give the maximum priority to what you want to say. 
there is another thing. Yeah, this is a common problem again found in too many presentations. Uh, can anybody point out what is the problem in this slide? What is whatever I have marked as square? What is the problem with that area? Uh, or actually writing types, maybe uh, writing manner, the way it is written. Any any guesses? Probably no, because everybody thinks that that is the only way to write. Okay, so I'll tell you. Uh, when you have only one word in line and you start with the next line, it is implied that you are explaining that word. So no need to put colons in that, first thing. Second thing, if you have only one definition to explain of uh, soft lifting, you need not put that dashed bullet there. So when you have four definitions of soft lifting, then you need those four things to distinguish them, right? When you have just one bullet, and that I have seen in umpteen number of presentations submitted today, that for one bullet, there is still a round or a square or a dash or whatever. You don't require that when you have just one point to say. So it will be more easy to read slide when you avoid this kind of clutters. So that was the reason I wanted to choose this slide to explain. So see this, so all these things have only one definition and still they have the bullets, which is actually uh, taking this part indented for no rhyme or reason. You are changing the color, you are changing the font size, so it's already clear that you, you are defining that word. So it was pretty clear, so no need of that hashed bullet. Uh, this was a slide with bad graphic example. I'm not sure if anybody else has done it. I saw one or two presentations who actually explained why that bad is bad, right? That was a very good effort actually. I think I have that in the example, but uh, uh, that was a very good uh, uh, indicator of how you are already aware of what is bad. That was a good sign of doing it. Although I didn't ask for it, that define your bad, bad slide, but they did it on their own. So that was a good sign. Uh, what is bad about this? What is bad about this slide? By the way, who did this? Uh, which group? Huh, same group, sorry. We are in the same presentation. Okay, what is bad about this? Okay. Okay, the visual is unclear visual. So it is, so according to our, if you recall the types of graphics, this is neither decorative, neither representational. Because if you want to decorate, you could have used, this is okay, either, but it still does not represent what you want to say. You want to say piracy uh, hubs or something. So a lot of pirated CD is what, you, is what you want to show, but you can't distinguish what is it. So that is why it is a bad graphic. Okay, let's, uh, oh, by the way, this, uh, this slide was good according to me for one interesting reason, which actually is the topic of today's lecture, of use of colors. So when you are talking about penal codes, what color is first strikes your mind? Indian penal code bolte hi, lal color yaad hai. So they have, they have tried to have add that uh, with, a, with a gray backdrop and so there are four penal codes shown in, in a very uh, striking manner that if you don't do this, maybe they are discussing that they did unintentionally and then, okay. <laughs> Was it intentional or unintentional? <laughs> now it has become intentional, okay. Just on the fly it became intentional, fine. Uh, but I think after I, um, I have today's presentation, probably we'll start doing it intentionally rather than doing it by accident. Okay, same, uh, same problem. When you have just one definition, don't put fancy bullets, just these arrows and all are not required because you have only one thing. Uh, this actually, according to me, was an example of bad slide because you talk about trends and you show a decorative graphic. When you say trends, you need to show what? You are, you are doing a quantitative comparison. So this is better than that and or it is changing over a period of time. So you want to show something like that. So if graphs or tables are, are the most useful thing. But you need, when you are talking about trends, you are showing just, just one pop-up picture of something else. But actually they had submitted this as their bad designed slides. 
So most of the bad graphic examples were badly designed slide examples. They hardly had uh, a definition of why uh, the use of graphic was bad in that. But uh, nevertheless, I was uh, quite happy with the submissions. I will uh, show something from the last year's uh, presentations. Uh, this was this was from the summer interns who came up last year and gave presentation in the end. Uh, have a look at uh, this, the dotted square. They want to talk about a positive and a negative point of every topic. And they have put a plus and a minus there. They could have easily did that with some color code. They had the bullets. So you can just put a green bullet and a red bullet. And it's very easy to retain uh, for retention purpose what was the positive point of that and what was negative. Now, this is becoming too difficult for me to read first of all. Secondly, for alignment it is a problem because the plus takes more space than the, the minus sign. So it just looks very jaggered at the end, right? Okay, so I think uh, we'll just move on to uh, the presentation today which is about impress. So uh, we will we'll be really zipping out through this presentation because I have too many things to tell you. And uh, like other presentations, this presentation also will be up on the website so you can have more questions maybe in the last class and I will be present here to answer those. Okay, so talking about color schemes, we will uh, we'll just see uh, some examples. So this is a word given military. There are four colors given to it. Which one is suitable for this word and why? Any guesses for that? So unanimous decision is, is pink. No. Uh, uh? How, oh, how many for gray and how many for green? How many for gray? Military gray, okay. And how many for military green? And rest are for blue. Okay, and how many for pink? Oh, sorry, pink, <laughs> okay. So, yeah, there is a... So let me just say, okay, if you if you lock blue, uh, green, or gray for something uh, in military, so what will you do for soft? The word soft. So you'll have uh, you'll de you'll chuck. Actually, you can do a negative marking for this. You can say that okay, this is not soft at all. So what is not soft here? Like pink was not military. What is not soft here? Blue. How many how many for blue not not soft? Okay, lot of them. Okay, so now when you check out blue, how many people will check out blue for space? Or uh, green for space? How many people will not like green for space? Lot of them, right? Similarly, when I say neutral, you, you need have a question or you're raising hand for, okay, fine. Uh, so what, what I am trying to show you is that for for various colors, you carry certain meanings. And how does that come? So color is equal to mood, color is equal to expression, color is equal to convention, and that's why color has a meaning. And every time you use a color, it suddenly starts flowing the meaning along with it. There are uh, standard uh, definitions of different color schemes. I'm just keeping them uh, in this slide. And they are called monochromatic contrasting and triads where uh, three or more colors are used. Um, these have to be used in in this format. If you want more readability, use more contrast. Like the slide what you had for disadvantages, the problem was gray text on gray background, which is not visible. So if you want readability, if readability is your idea, then use more contrast. But since you said you made that as a bad graphic, it was a perfect example. Uh, this is very interesting information for especially for you guys who are going to present. The, depending on the room where you are going to present, you can choose between the type of backgrounds. Uh, there are lot, some presentations I got with black background, some of them, and most of them were white background presentations, and couple of them were green background presentations also, who were uh, t talking on the topic of uh, save trees, right? So typically, bright room like this, use a white background with a black text on it. Now that's more readable and it, it is more easy to read. I'm just showing some examples of vivid and pale. I hope you can see that. But the pale is anyway not, not supposed to be seen as it is already. 
The second aspect is about the typography, and I, I have uh, seen uh, almost 95% presentations, especially those who are done in Windows, using Arial uh, or Times Roman as the font, and they don't go beyond that, probably not even realizing uh, what is the options uh, offered by uh, the tool. Uh, just, just quick uh, recap on what are the available things with you, what are the tools with you, and uh, these are mostly the type of fonts called the serif fonts and the sans serif font, and some of them are uh, look like written by hand, they are called the script font. And uh, just going back with the example, now if we say that uh, we want the word military there, uh, which font should, should be, uh, okay, so again the negative marking, which one will not be the good one out of the four? Green one, no, blue one, okay. It depends on the perception, right? So some people who find military as a disciplined thing will probably even like the, uh, the blue one because it's quite straight. Uh, the green color is fine, but the font is too casual to, uh, to military, right? So these kind of things will be depending on perception. Same thing happen with, with soft. Uh, what is the first thing you want to see in the word soft? You want softer edges. You don't want sharp edges, right? So even though you have uh, the green one having a lot of curves, it still has those sharp edges. But the top one, the gray one, actually looks like it is pretty soft. For the space thing, you, you have various choices. Same thing happens for neutral. So now neutral is not neutral actually. And most of the cases it is not neutral except for probably you will settle down for, if you have to choose from the four, you will ch settle down for green one or blue one, gray one, okay. Gray, you are, you are going by the color or the font? What, what, what is riding your decision? Most of the time it is color actually because that hits you first, okay. So um, that is why I am now coming to the point is that when you want to emphasize something, what are the options available with you? And exactly from the same point what you just made an observation, you, you chose neutral more by color and not by font. So how, to, how do you lend emphasize? If you want to emphasize something, you lend it by making it bold. You can do it by making it italics. You can do it by underlining. You can also do it by color. If you, if you can choose a proper color. The problem happens when most of the people merge all these emphasizing options into one and make it bold, italic, colorful, and underlined. And that is where it is overemphasized. And that's very peculiar of most of the presentation. When they, they just stuff everything into one, you can just do it by slight italics and you are unnecessarily using that. The best example is uh, novels. Uh, if you read classic novels, you will hardly find color in that. Uh, actually, no color in that. They are mostly black and white. And um, they will emphasize using the only thing they can change is the italics and very, very rarely, especially only for the name of the chapters probably they'll use bold. Even then they will not use it because they'll just change the font size. So chapter is uh, separately kept at the top and it's just bigger font size, that's all. But then that lends you complete freedom to visualize the way you want to visualize the, the novel. So that's the beauty of it. So, uh, like I gave some color guidelines, these are some typography guidelines. Uh, by try and uh, use as minimum fonts as possible. Don't use too many fonts. Uh, two are advisable. My presentation is an exception because I'm talking about it. So, you can easily counter saying that why your presentation had 61 fonts, but that was only to show something else. Okay, so use font options to emphasize and uh, use the alignment feature of left because we have a tendency of leading left to right and top to bottom. So avoid center, center aligned. Any, any classic example, what is center, centrally aligned looks best? Like what is the best example of centrally aligned things? Any content you can imagine that, huh? Pardon me? Title, yeah, good, okay. No, apart from presentation. Any place where you can be happy with a centralized layout? Huh? Okay. okay, invitation cards. That is the that is the most popular version of centrally aligned because you have to give emphasis to everything. So there is nothing like that. And you have to read linearly from top to bottom. 
That is why in an invitation card, you will always find a centrally aligned thing, except for the venue and time or something which will be left aligned somewhere hanging in the bottom. That's a standard invitation card. Uh, I just missed out, I didn't read this bullet, but it's a very important bullet. Use grid. Uh, all, almost all the softwares where you make your presentation uh, slides have an option called switch on grid. The grid will give you a dotted line box at the bottom of the presentation area, which will help you in deciding alignment of objects what you are putting. Uh, let me tell you, it is a very important feature, especially I have seen a lot of presentations where text and visuals are hanging, they are not in alignment with each other. And nowadays, the tools are so sophisticated that if you just start moving the visual, it will automatically give you some yellow colored lines, which will tell you whether it is aligned with this part or that part. My suggestion is please use those tools. Please uh, look at those options and use them very, very carefully. That will just help you enhance the presentation quality as such. From uh, any questions so far? Anyway, but I'm not going to take because I'll take them in the next session where because I have to cover up a um, couple of slides. Just uh, take these papers, write your roll numbers. This is the attendance sheet for today. Okay, coming to visual effects. So once you are done with your fonts and colors, you have put in everything in your presentation. The next uh, hurdle is actually adding some visual effects. And uh, people use variety of uh, effects for text. They just drop those uh, things down. And uh, there are so many fancy um, tra transitions available. And people make full use of that. So actually, there are some door openers, and uh, there are some blasts, and there is something called page curl, which is very popular, apparently. And there are some sliding windows. And uh, box, now this is the very latest one, which a lot of people are using. But what happens is, the range becomes so bad that finally you forget what was, uh, what was the title of this presentation, when, when, where would we start this? So it just takes away, uh, let us unwind a bit probably, just go back. Okay, so we started here, we started with impress. And uh, what you don't want at all in any of the presentations, that the people should ideally should take away whatever you, the message you are trying to say. And they should not be taken away from the message. So they should remain in the message, right? The moment you start showing this uh, graphics overloaded with uh, every whatever computational power you have, they are just going away from the message, which you don't want and you can't afford that because you're making a very serious presentation at times. So that brings us to this uh, very classic debate of form and function. So what is the form uh, and what is the function? Uh, form is actually, it is written in the other way, but I will read it from right to left this time. So function is what is the message. Now I'm talking in terms of uh, communication in, t in, in a written part or a visual part, but this was actually derived from architectural and product design uh, domain, where the function is how the object uh, is to be. So what is the purpose of creating that object? That was the actually origin of this form or function debate. But if you know what is the message, then form is how you are showing the message. So within this tussle of what should come first, most of the researchers agree that uh, the function should be decided first. So if you know the function is to uh, have a bunch of bristles to clean and apply something, if that is the function, the form will depend on what is the application. So uh, I'm coming back to the point where I said that you need to know your audience when you, when you design a presentation. So similarly, if the function is only stated like this, you have a bunch of bristles uh, to clean or apply something, uh, there can be multiple applications. And as you can see, for every application, you have a different form of the same function. So you have a toothbrush, you have a shaving brush, you have a painting brush. And like I said, if you say paper, probably this is not the brush you would like to use, but this is the brush you would like to use. Because for a wall, probably you will go with the first one. So depending on the, the form, and the form will change according to the function. Depending on the function, the form will change. So it's, it's correlated. And that is why what I wanted to uh, show you was, okay, so 
considering uh, one of the examples from my own research, where the title of my thesis is Design Considerations for Creating E-Learning Animations. I could have shown it like this, because it is about design and it is about animations, but uh, rather this is more readable and more apt for the kind of uh, audience I'm going to cater to. It's not a, a audience which will be lured by such thing because they are more interested in the slides after this, not on this animation. So avoid these things and how to do that? So this classic debate is solved like this according to me and uh, you can just uh, give some time to think over it. What I say is uh, both are important, you can't neglect anyone, but inadequate attention to either of them will lead to ineffective communication. So if I just understand that bunch of bristles for applying something is the uh, thing given to me, and I, I give uh, inadequate attention to the form when I'm deciding the form, I'll probably start using a toothbrush to paint a wall, which is wrong. So I have to understand, give adequate attention to what is being told to me, but if I give excess attention, then it will create a chaos. So if I, if I have too much of form, um, stuffed into whatever was given to me, it will become a problem case. So in my opinion, content should govern the decision of what form uh, it should take up. So the function is finalized, like you know what is the content, it is finalized. Let that take the decision making role while deciding how it should be presented. Uh, this is a question asked from the last uh, semester uh, students that uh, what should I use for presentation? Uh, uh, there are so many tools available and uh, what should I use? Is it Keynote is better than PowerPoint or a Beamer is better than PowerPoint? Uh, this is one uh, research I just uh, could see on the web where PowerPoint is the most preferred thing and no doubt about it. And uh, but the uh, going by the earlier definition of the content should govern your decision of selecting the form, I have just wanted to uh, show you an example. So if you want to present it to a particular audience, then it becomes easy for you to choose the kind of presentation tool you want to. So if the content is a conference paper about math uh, game based on gesture recognition, if that is the title of your paper, and you have to show the entire process and the audience is a conference attendee, then you have two options. You have a very, how many people know about Prezi by the way? Prezi as a presentation tool, yes? Okay, so you guys can tell others in your group what is Prezi, who, those who don't know. But Prezi is an online tool created for creating animated presentations, in which case actually the entire presentation lies on one single piece of area or space and the the software actually shows you one part at a time. It has the ability to show you one part at a time. So it, it, that is the way they are creating it. So there is a presentation option from that. This is a template from Keynote like one I'm using here. And uh, which one will you uh, use actually? I, I don't have the example right now because I was thinking I'll be short of time. So uh, after we debated about this point, well, I am just showing you the conclusion what happened in the last semester. So a lot of people found out that uh, because we had a case study as an assignment in the class. So people are asked, some people are asked to make a crazy presentation for the same topic and some people just made a, a PDF of that, uh, a PowerPoint presentation of that. And then people found out that a simple PDF for CS conference is good enough to communicate as against an animated presentation in a game developers conference where people or the audience is completely different. So why is that? It's because communication is about the effectiveness of design to put forth a message. So if you, if, you, if you code the message properly and then if you want to communicate that to the, the this destined audience, like you know that this is the destination where my message has to go, then probably you, you are in a better place to choose the tools appropriately. So, uh, just a recap of that because I'll, I'll stop here on, on this and I'm just making the last point of practice which is very, very important. Whatever you want to create, uh, it doesn't stop at the point where you have made a beautiful .ppt or a, a .pdf 
it, it requires human effort in terms of practicing that over and over again, timing it properly so that it ends in exact uh, time limit what is given to you. And most of the time in conferences, I have seen the bells ringing, your time is over and you stop and you have still not come to conclusion slide. And uh, that is where the whole problem starts ha happening because you have not communicated the message fully. So what's the big use of making a very beautiful presentation? So these kind of things are some of the important aspects of, also important aspects of presentation, which are not actually visual communication, which I am supposed to talk of. But uh, I just wanted to add that based on my experience um, uh, over, over a period of time. So practice is all the more important and uh, time it and practice it according to the, not only from the timing part of it, but also from the technology part of it. So can you click at the time when you want to go to the next slide is also part of practice. So can you alt tab and show the website what you wanted to show? Is it open at that particular instance is also part of practice. Have you opened all the windows which you want to show at that time? Have you checked out the network before uh, starting the presentation? Also part of practice. And that is, that is very important because at the last minute, most of the people will be seen um, trying to connect or trying to type in the URL and not getting it because the network is down at that instance and you have not downloaded that PDF. Such things happen quite frequently if the practice is not done in advance. So I just took this opportunity to add a couple of other uh, injections to the topic what I was given. So uh, thank you and this is my email ID where you can mail me for some queries or comments if you have about this thing. And like other presentations, even this will be uh, uploaded on the website, uh, on the Moodle, and you can download it and make use of it. But, uh, why all the things that we have stated are important? First of all, the absence of whole numbers in your presentation. You will never do that when you are making a presentation for your your first slide will have your whole number entry. But in a group, how did the group forget to have a slide with all the whole numbers in at this whole number? Second, invariably, when you upload a file, how to leave the file has to be told to you by somebody. It's not stated. And suppose it is the assignment file. Practically, 80% submission will have five minutes, assignment underscore five or assignment five. Can you understand the price of a poor teacher who gets 105 assignment five and has no proof who has submitted who has not submitted? In fact, in my CS11 course, I usually quote a lecture titled, What is there in a name? And I can prove that everything is there. Observe that when you study programming, for example, how many of you did not naturally write different program versions that t1.cp, 2.cp, 3.cp, 4.cp, etc. Why did you write it? 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 This is a question of discipline and practice. And I'll tell you one of the major psychological reasons, it is universally true for all human beings, it is much more true for Indians and Asians in particular. We are extremely self-centric, extremely self-centric, more than most other people from the world. The selfish and natural but being completely self-centric means we are less sensitive to others. So take this question of name. When I give a name to my side deck or my file, I am looking at myself only. And I understand perfectly well what assignment file is. Also, I have my own number in it. So I don't see, genuinely, I don't see any need to improve this. The fundamental aspect of any communication is communication is meant for others. This point perhaps has not been emphasized sufficiently in, in this form. But write that down as the most important cardinal principle. Communication is not meant for you alone. There are, there are forms of communication. 
meditation, for example, is a self-communication. Communication with God, typically, is self-communication. But the kind of communication that in this world you are interested and that you will be doing in most of the time is meant for others. It does not matter whether you are preparing a verbal communication, written communication or presentation twice. But at least one minute before you start making the presentation, and at least for one minute after you have made the presentation, one minute, not nothing more, but nothing less, you must sit down and put yourself in the shoes of the person or person for whom this communication is meant. We never do that. We prepare the communication as if we are preparing it for ourselves. We may occasionally think of others, but that is not the driving point of our you get this point? That is why what is there in the name is to be seen not from your anger, but from somebody else's. About five names, about many generations, about writing those number the name, about citation of paper, everything is built around the premise that communication is meant for us. And this you better sort of take it into your time. The notion of overemphasis cannot be overemphasized. I got the first brush in 1973 or 74. In those days, the question papers uh, were psycho style. There was no Xerox machine. I don't know how many of you have seen uh, a, a, a psycho styling uh, machine and a stylus and other things. Has anybody seen that? Very old technology. It was very painful. You have to type a question paper which, I mean, by removing the ribbon on the typewriter. So that the perforations are made on the back end and then you take the sacrifice. So there used to be a big thing more when we go for uh, examination papers where actually centrally typed in the morning of the exam. And there would be a typist allocated to each teacher. So I would go with my question paper and then give it back. In 74 I learned this lesson in not over effort. So the typist who was typing the, the, initially, as you know, there are notes. One open book examination, only this is allowed in second. And then, when he was typing the second sentence, he just laughed. I didn't know what happened. What is so funny about my paper? So he said, You have written, uh, interacting with labor is strictly prohibited. They said, Of course, it is strictly prohibited. So he says, Do you know what prohibited means? Yes, prohibited is forbidden. So what does strictly prohibited mean? I said strictly forbidden. <laughs> he says you are completely undermining the meaning of the word prohibited. Prohibited is prohibited. Period. Period. There is absolutely nothing else, no qualification required. Prohibited. So you should not say strictly prohibited. Very strictly <laughs> This overemphasis has to be. And we, again, this is a trait in us, Indians and Asians, where we, we sort of add adjectives, we tend to add superlatives more than others. So this is something that we should learn to uh, do less. On the form and content, uh, I'll give you one example. Many of us are good speakers. Me and a, a colleague of mine had uh, uh, gone to a conference where we met a person who had attended uh, my talk two years ago in some other conference. And uh, <coughs> he was all Ghana. He was extremely impressed with that presentation. That, uh, I really loved that presentation. So my friend who was with me uh, curiously asked me, what did you talk about? So I said, I don't really remember. Then he asked him, so what did Professor Patak talk about? He said, that I don't remember. <laughs> but he gave a fantastic talk. <laughs> so you see, this is form over content. People remember you for the fantastic presentation that you made, but forget the point that you are making.
So recently my friend Dr. Anand Deshpande, who has persistent system, uh, told me about a trick which Mr. Ajit Premji uses. Mr. Ajit Premji, as some of you might know, is the head of Wipro. So whenever he gives talk, he will start by saying, I'll tell you four things. And then he will say number one. Let me say something. Some point, some word he will use, and then he will talk about it. Then he will say, now we have talked about the first point, this. Now I will talk about the point two, which is this. And he goes to point three, he repeats point one, point two, and then mentions point three, talks about point two. And at the end he says, point one, point two, point three, and now I will talk about point four, which is that's In conclusion, you say, so my dear friend, I have shared four important things with you. One, this, two, this, three, this, four, this. I hope you will contemplate about these points. That's what I Ninety-nine percent of the people do not forget those four points. Ninety-nine percent. You ask anybody who has attended as you said this talk, on such and such topic, they will say, ah, said this, this, this. Maybe one or two points in there. But you can you realize the usefulness of such a approach? Why is it important to you when you make a presentation on the uh, or seminar or a paper presentation or something like that? You will have so many things to say. And many times that detail will overshadow the identification of the salient point that you Do not make that. So what are the three things that I have talked about? <laughs> what is there in a name? Choose name carefully, represent names properly, wherever. Whether it is five names, your names, whole numbers, whatever. Variable names in program. Program names. The second is do not overemphasize. So please do not strictly prohibit them. Just just prohibit them. Uh, I am tempted to tell you a story of uh, one so in the movie, I don't know whether I share it or not. Some six American generals are captured by Italians and they are kept in an Italian prison. And of course, as for Geneva Convention, they are kept in a very royal big palace. They are all generals. They move around, they have all facilities with them. Towards the end of the Second World War, Germans take over Italy. And they take over all the prisons. So all these six generals are taken in a, in a truck to an army camp and they are all put in a barrack. When they head out of the truck, they find some very flimsy kind of arrangements. So one general takes out uh, a book from his uh, pocket and gives it to that sergeant there. He says, we are generals of the U.S. Army. We expect to be treated as per Jimmy Carter. He gives that book. The sergeant is shown completely helpful. He says, what can I do? He is shown Jimmy Carter. So what does it have? So the general says, it has all the rules using which you have to deal with us. So many rules. So just a thing there. Then the sergeant just keeps the book and says, no, no, no. Let me tell you, we follow some very simple rules here. Rule number one. Anybody disobeying order, then he stops. Anybody disobeying any order will be shot dead. Rule number two, and again this person that. Then says, there is no rule number two. Rule number one covers everything. <laughs> so you see, very, very clearly, without any undue emphasis, he has told in one sentence, you don't do what I tell you, you will be shot. I think I should have followed that principle and said, <laughs> anybody who does not attend 100% rather will fail. <laughs> so single rule will cover everything. So uh, let me take this opportunity to thank uh, uh, Professor Samit Sajjabhate. I hope you uh, you liked it, you uh, appreciated the presentation, there was something useful that you could get out of this. Please use that in your communication. <laughs> Thank you. We will have our last lecture on this Thursday. Uh, apparently the institute portion is still going on by Kumar Kapoor. There is uh, next, uh, next week, Monday is a holiday. So they are in combined Monday and Tuesday.
I will talk to Professor Zeki as to why he has decided to screw up the Tuesday, Thursday guys completely. Because every time I do the lecture on Tuesday, okay, that is, uh, uh, you know that next Tuesday is a combined lecture again because of the other year. Well, this time I have decided to be one upon you. I am going to tell him it's okay because I am finishing my lecture on this Thursday. <laughs> So we shall not have any class after Thursday, I would like you to concentrate on other topics. But very important, this Thursday class is an absolutely obligatory class. So unless there is an extraordinary emergency, I would not like anybody to be there. So that is the day on which I will take stock of all that has happened in this course. And more importantly, from the student's perspective, I will, uh, my ears as we speak are going through the uh, all uh, submissions and other things, delayed submissions, the uh, lack of attendance, people sending those emails. Apparently, not everybody is the email, uh, not everybody has sent the email to the Moodle. To do that, it is 699 automatically comes up on the submission. But if you send a personal email and it is sent from Word of Mr. Brown and subject line absent today. Actually, if you cleverly use the subject line, just roll number so and so was absent on this day. Just that. And you don't need to have any message. Just the subject is very appropriate to convey everything that you wanted. So I mean short messages, but accurate messages and comprehensive messages, including the subject matter. This is another thing I would like to tell you. What is there in a name? What is there in a title? Anybody who does not compose the subject line by critically looking at what you want to convey is doing a disservice to the recipient. Please remember, forget my mail was the exception, I get 250 emails a day. Now, when I have to start, I will remember I have received a mail from a student. I have seen it fleeting. But I don't remember the name of the student. What will I search on? I will search on SSL 699. I will search on keyword absent in the message. Please remember with several gigabytes of my email, I cannot offer a full text search of them. It is like half an hour. So please be considerate to others for whom your communication has to be effective. Henceforth, at least decide you will never send an email without spending 30 seconds on constructing the message like approach. Please look for message portion. It's a very, very important paper. And as I said, you did not often write anything else with a short message. I will conclude by telling you the shortest ever conversation that I have heard. Uh, my senior colleague is now retired from the SSP law into the agency computer science department. We are staying in some uh, seat type quarters there, and I have gone over to apprise the professor uh, Balcon Lima, who is a professor in math department here. And I was inside his house, and we were talking about uh, some meeting that was uh, scheduled tomorrow, next day, by Professor Bala and so on. While we were discussing, I had a cup of tea, suddenly it told me a rant. Professor Nimai opened the door. SSP Rao was standing outside. This is the previous conversation I have heard. So, uh, uh, Professor Balmond, when he saw SSP Rao, he said, Tomorrow, he wanted to continue. SSP Rao said, Tell her. And that's Tomorrow, tell her. Everybody is in the country. Nothing else was required. But that was a face-to-face -face conversation where both of them knew exactly what they were talking about. We have also heard about the lowest <coughs> conversation that happened between two sadhus in Himalaya, three sadhus in Himalaya. <laughs> Did I tell you that story? The slowest conversation. There are three sadhus who were doing some professionally and Himalaya. First they went to Haridwar and they said it was very crowded. Then they went to Rishikesh, uh, see some people. Then they said, this is nonsense, they must really go to place that they will not be disturbed. So they all climbed up Himalayas and went to a completely secluded place. No people there. And then they started doing their tapestry without talking to each other. 
Three years later, one of the sadhus said, last year it was very cold. And again nothing happened. Two more years. The second sadhu said, yes. <laughs> Three more years passed by. The third sadhu said, I am irritated. If you are going to talk like that, I will go somewhere. <laughs>